all. Do you know the connection between turkeys and electricity? Well, this is just a wild guess. Uh, it, it takes $5 worth of electricity to cook a 20-pound Thanksgiving turkey. How's that for an answer? Not very good, really. Must be a guy thing. The real connection is that turkeys, well, actually the stuff that turkeys leave behind, called turkey litter, is used to make electricity. Whoa! Now, Einstein couldn't have guessed that. Where did you come up with that concept? Actually, I didn't come up with the concept at all. A company called Febrowatt has built a plant in Benson, Minnesota that burns turkey litter. Holy schmoly! Another huge plant. And lots of secret stuff going on inside, I suppose. Yes, it's a huge plant. But what goes on there isn't going to be a secret for long. Greg Langmo, the fuel manager at Fibroman, is going to give us a video tour. Watch this. We're here today at North America's first and the world's largest poultry litter fired power plant. We combust somewhere in the area of 500,000 tons a year of poultry litter to make renewable energy. We bring in poultry litter and other clean vegetative biomass materials, blend them together so that we have a relatively level moisture content, and then we blow them into a very large boiler in the boiler, you have a very hot fire, probably 1,500 degrees. The tubes are full of water, and as the water gets hot and turns to steam, it expands, is driven out of the boiler into a turbine, and the turbine spins a generator that makes electricity. Electricity is measured in megawatts, and we gross production of about 63 megawatts. We export roughly 52 and we use our own power to run the plant. These lights today are being supplied by poultry litter. We bring about uh, 100 truckloads a day into the plant. This is a typical load of poultry litter. It'll weigh uh, approximately 24 or 25 ton, and it'll take them just a few minutes to unload. You can see the fuel handling crane dips it out of the pit, then they take it where it's blended. And the idea of the repeated handling of it is to try to get the moisture blended evenly throughout our fuel supply. What we have here are samples. We sample each load of biomass as it comes into the plant. You can see some of the components are sunflower hulls. There's some shavings in there. And the rest of it is dander and feathers and, of course, manure. What we have here is called the fuel feed conveyor. And the belt comes up and it drops into a series of other hoppers where it's blown into the boiler. These blue things on my left are the fuel feed hoppers where it goes into the combustor down below. And you can see on the bottom down there, the litter is actually burning on the grate. We're running about a 1500 degree internal temperature. To my left here is the boiler itself. It's obviously insulated and covered so that the heat doesn't get out into the building. Over here we have heat exchangers. In order to take the heat out of the flue gas, we have fresh air passing on one side of the tube, the hot flue gas is on the other, and then we reuse that heat into the furnace in order to get more economies out of the furnace. This is the steam turbine right here connected to the generator. The steam comes in the bottom, spins this turbine, which moves that shaft to create the electricity. We're directly underneath the boiler right now. The grate is just above us. These triangular shaped devices are a small amount of ash will fall there. Most of the grate ash comes off on this monster conveyor right here. This plant is a zero emissions plant in that we have no outputs other than electricity and ash. We take this ash and sell it back to the farmer to fertilize his field. So we're really closing that carbon loop very nicely. It's a wonderful, in my opinion, a closed loop system. Over my shoulder, you can see the tan colored tube is where the steam comes out of the turbine. Overhead here we have 10 very large fans that are just like the radiator on your car. So the steam that comes out of the turbine is pushed through this system where it's turned back into water so we can reuse all our water. 
Treated water is extremely important in a combustion technology that we employ here. We need to clean any impurities and any mineral out of the water so that they don't build up on the tubes of the boiler and cause decreased efficiency, erosion and corrosion, those types of things. Over my shoulder is the water softener, which is the same technology that you use at home, although this is on an industrial scale, of course. Over here to my right, we have a reverse osmosis system, and then we have our water storage on the other side. What we have here is our water quality lab. We need to monitor the water that comes from the water treatment room, is run through the systems, and these discharge points are coming off the actual equipment in the plant. So we'll take out a sample to make sure that it's within the parameters that are required by the equipment. This is the main control room of the plant. They can control all functions. They've got cameras throughout the facility where the operators can tell what's going on. In order to uh, be a control room operator, you have to be certified by the state of Minnesota with a proper licensure. These are great jobs, uh, highly paid and highly skilled with lots of room for advancement. I think the next great innovations that are going to really impact our lives, the lives of our kids and grandkids long term is going to be energy. There's tremendous opportunity to find new and different ways to harvest biomass fuels, to process it, make it burn better, faster, stronger. Our power needs aren't going to go away. They're getting bigger every year. Pretty impressive stuff, huh, Joel? Unbelievable. So 100 truckloads of turkey litter a day are producing enough electricity to power 44,000 homes? That's right. Where are they getting all that litter from, anyhow? Here's the story. Minnesota is the number one turkey producing state in the nation. Our farmers raise more than 44 million turkeys a year, mostly in a seven county area in west central Minnesota. About 90% of the birds raised here are processed into frozen turkeys or turkey products and shipped to other parts of the U.S. That brings in more than $600 million for farmers, processors, and related businesses. Every turkey raised here eats about 75 pounds of feed, and what's left behind can be used for fertilizer, or the litter can be burned at Fibromin. So Yin, I've got the slogan of the year. Poop power, renewable fuel from Minnesota, the turkey capital of the world. How does that sound? It sounds to me like you've been seeing too many bright lights, Joel. But I guess it does help us remember where that power comes from. With that, I suppose we should sign off. I think so. I'll close with this. Minnesota turkeys, I'm proud of all you do for us, whether it's food, fertilizer, or electricity.